this weekend on UBC. And today I'm going to stay in Luke chapter 15. And the whole idea is to see how God caters for that one individual, for that one person who is lost. You know, sometimes it's easy to get lost in the crowd. It's easy to think that, that God is, you know, too busy. Like he has so many important projects to deal with that he doesn't have time to deal with you and your small issues and your petty issues. But today I want to bring to your information that God is concerned about you as an individual. Part of that story is that after they had spent the whole night toiling, Jesus came at the seashore and made them breakfast. Think about that. That God of the universe could find time to make for men some breakfast. That's the God we are talking about in this season. With his power Praise Jesus. We thank God for the opportunity He has given us again to come to your home. I thank God for every one of you who watches this broadcast. I thank God for precious partners, people who stand with us, people who support us to be on air every Sunday. You're touching lives. People are being transformed. Every week I meet somebody who tells me, I watched you on the TV program. I was blessed by the TV program. I really thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for the things that he's doing at our new church location, at the Upper Room Church in Barara. God is doing amazing things. Lives are being transformed already. Lives are being changed. It's a great thing to serve the Lord in this season. And uh, we have been doing a series. We have been talking about how God restores somebody who is prodigal. I talked about the parable of the lost son last week and today I'm going to stay in Luke chapter 15 and the whole idea is to see how God caters for that one individual, for that one person who is lost. You know, sometimes it's easy to get lost in the crowd. It's easy to think that, that God is, you know, too busy, like he has so many important projects to deal with, that he doesn't have time to deal with you and your small issues and your petty issues. But today I want to bring to your information that God is concerned about you as an individual. That's the message we see in Luke chapter 15. There is the parable of the lost sheep, the parable of the lost son, and the parable of the lost coin. And in all those parables, Jesus is emphasizing how God is interested in that one person. Let's see, Luke chapter 15 from verse, uh, verse, number, verse number 4. Luke 15 verse number 4. Jesus is asking a question. He says, What man of you, if he has a hundred sheep and should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? Do you hear the heart of God? What man of you, if he has a hundred sheep and should lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. When he gets home, he summons together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep which was lost. Today I have come to speak to that sheep which is lost. If you feel like you are that one person that maybe 
You used to serve God, but somehow you got lost in the world. You used to love God, but somehow you got lost in the world. You used to go to church, but somehow you got lost in the world. You, are a, you know, some people are believers, and then they go to study. You know, you are a believer, and then you went to study a master's degree, a PhD, or you met some friends, and they had this all uh, thinking, and you came back from believer to uh, a skeptic, from believer to somebody who is not sure about their faith anymore. If you're that kind of person who feels lost, or you are a person who has gone back to something which God has saved, had saved you from. This morning I was reading in John chapter 21. There's an interesting story there. Peter and the other disciples of Jesus. This is after Jesus had died and rose again, but you know he hadn't come back to them. And Peter just woke up one morning and says, I'm going back fishing. And all the, others, all the other disciples said, we are going with you. They went back to what he had called them from. Okay? They went back to where he had picked them. And what is interesting about this story is that they tried to catch fish for the whole night and they caught nothing. These were formerly experienced fishermen. When he called them, they were fishermen. He told them, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. But when they went back, they tried the whole night to catch fish and they caught nothing. They were in a place where they were not supposed to be. They were in a place he had called them from, given them new assignment, but they went back fishing and they caught nothing. But the amazing part of that story is that after they had spent the whole night toiling, Jesus came at the seashore and made them breakfast. Think about that. That God of the universe could find time to make for men some breakfast. That's the God we are talking about in this season. The God who is interested in the individual. The God who is interested in your business. The God who seeks you out when you are lost. You may have thought that you have gone so far from God, but the very fact that you have tuned in to this broadcast today is a testimony that God is still interested in you. God has not given up on you yet. You might have blown it. You might have denied him. This Peter that J Jesus was making breakfast for, this Peter had denied Jesus. And the other disciples, they had all denied Jesus. They had all run away from him. But Jesus comes back to them, comes to the place of their being lost, the place of their returning to what he had called them from, and he offers them breakfast. He offers them breakfast. God is still interested in you, God is still pursuing you, and God is still calling you back. Like I was sharing last week, God is calling the prodigal sons back home. If you're watching me right now and you are prodigal, I'm here to tell you there is food back home. I'm here to tell you that your place back home is still there. I'm here to tell you that there is an opportunity still to serve God back home. In the house of God, there is still room for you. There is still opportunity for you. There is opportunity for you to love God again. There is opportunity for you to be forgiven. Opportunity for you to be restored. And when God decides to restore, He restores double. He gives you double for your shame, double for your trouble. Today you can come back home. Today you can say, I'm coming back to serving. You're watching me, and you used to serve God, but it's like in a distant past. When people bring up the subject, you want to change the subject. 
you know. You used to serve God. You move around and you see people who, whose lives you impacted. You move around and you're meeting people you preached to. You're meeting people you helped. And you left that place. This parable of the lost sheep, of the lost coin, and the lost son, Luke chapter 15, it's written for you. It's written to give you a message that no matter how far you have gone, God is interested in you. He's willing to leave the 99 and go to look for that one sheep which is lost. He's willing to do whatever it takes to get you back. He would like you to come back to serve. You know, some of you might be saying, ah, well, me, I've never been a Christian, whatever. But there's a reason why you are born in that Christian family. You know, there's a reason why you went to that school which had those Christian values. There's a reason why you listened to those sermons. There's a reason why that crusade came near your village. There's a reason why you're watching this broadcast. Because he is looking for the one and you are the one. You are that one sheep. You are that one lost son. You are that. They, it talks about uh, a woman in Luke chapter 15, verse 8. It says, Oh, that woman having ten silver uh, coins, if she loses one coin, does, not, uh, does she not light a lamp and sweep the house and look carefully and diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she summons her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the silver coin which I had lost. Verse 10 says, Even so, I tell you, there is joy among and in the presence of angels over the one sinner who repents. There is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. This evening, I want to invite you to cause heaven to rejoice. I want you to be that one person who says, I'm changing my mind. I'm changing my mind. I'm no longer mad at God. Because some of you watching me right now, the reason you left is that you are mad at God. Maybe that was a family tragedy. Maybe you expected something and you didn't get it. Or maybe you uh, hoped to be in a certain place, didn't go there. So you have this silent grudge against God. There's like a cold war between you and God. I'm here to tell you, stop the cold war. Deep down you know that you and God were tight. Deep down you know that you and God were friends. Deep down you know that you miss him. And the way you miss him is the way he misses you. And he has sent me to tell you there is still a place for you back home. He's calling you back home. Come back home. You are the one I'm talking about. Come back home. There is a place for you in the Father's house. There is a place for you in the presence of God. The Bible says there is rejoicing in heaven over that one sinner who repents. Be that one person who changes their mind and says, I'm going to serve God again. I'm going to follow God again. I'm going to go to church next Sunday. You know, maybe you chuck church. Maybe you got disappointed by church. You know, people leave church for different reasons. Maybe somebody hurt you in church. Maybe a minister that you trusted betrayed your trust. Maybe it's believers who betrayed your trust and you just stop going to church. You just stop the things of all the things of God. You you just you just set your program in such a way uh, that Sunday finds you busy. You know, that's when you go to the saloon, that's when you go to the gym, that's when you go where you are, that's when you meet some clients. You 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 kind of made Sunday busy come back home. You know that you are doing all those things because either you are mad at God or you are mad at church or you have this kind of uh, anger against 
those preachers who talk about money, those preachers who talk about, those preachers who fleece people their resources and whatever, and you have become like an advocate for whoever has been scammed. Come back home. Come back home. Regardless of all the messes that you know that are in the in the house and whatever, there are still some good preachers out there. There are still some good churches out there. And the thing also about church is that uh, we haven't found a perfect church yet. Eh? There isn't a perfect church yet. If you, it's Billy Graham who said that if you find a perfect church, don't join it. The, 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 the church is a collection of people that God is working at. Okay? So somebody could have hurt you because they were in a certain journey with God. God was working on them. Maybe they hadn't dealt with their anger yet. Maybe they hadn't dealt with their emotions yet. And they hurt you. But now they are in a better place than they were lastly when they hurt you. So come back home. Today I am speaking to the man, the woman who is lost out there. The man, the woman who is supposed to be in charge. The man, the woman who is supposed to be in a relationship with God. God is calling you back and you know yourself. There is a reason that God has put this message in my heart for you. There is a reason that you have tuned in this evening to listen to these words. Come back home. There is rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents. God has done whatever it takes. You see how he has finally got your attention? Maybe you have been kind of running away and this message has reached you. Why? Because God is willing to leave the 99 and to come to that one sheep that is lost. The story of the widow who uh, lost one coin and swept the whole house to look for that one coin. It talks about how God is interested in the individual. And by the way, when you read the scriptures, when I read the scriptures, I see the God who takes notice of individuals. I was meditating upon Zacchaeus, the tax collector, the short guy. Luke chapter 19. He was too short. He couldn't see Jesus. He was limited. He had money, but was limited by height. So he, he went ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree so that he could get a better aerial view of Jesus. And when Jesus comes, he's in this whole big crowd surrounded by people. But Jesus noticed Zacchaeus, looked up the sycamore tree and said, Zacchaeus, come down for today I'll be in your house. He noticed him. We have a God who notices. We have a God who notices what we go through. We have a God who is concerned about us. We have a God who pursues us. He pursues us. He never gives us. His love never, there's a song which says, His love never runs out. His love never gives up on us. Yes, that is our God. His love never runs out. You might be thinking, ah, me, can God still love me? I blew, I blew this. I, I went into drugs. I went into women. I cheated on my wife, I did this, I stole company money. Does God still have any love for me? He does. He does. God so loved the world. You know when the Bible says, God so loved the world? <laughs> you know what world God so loved? God so loved the world full of homosexuality. God so loved the world full of evil. God so loved the world full of robbers. God so loved the world full of uh, immorality. God so loved the world full of whatever you know that in the world that you don't like. God so loved the world with all its imperfection. And he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. He loves you. He loves you. He has been chasing you down. He has been pursuing you and he's speaking to you and saying, come back home. There is room for you. You know that prodigal son that I was talking about last Sunday? The guy, he reached a far country. At first he was rich. He had money, spent it on women, on drugs, on drinks and whatever. And then the Bible says there was a famine in the land and he began to be in want. That's what always happens. You might feel like you're doing well, okay? You might feel like 
Somebody will say, I don't go to church. Do I have any problem? Do I look like I'm missing anything? But you know, at some point things look like they are okay. But then a famine comes. It surely comes. And you begin to be in one. You begin to feel the emptiness that I was talking about last Sunday. You begin to feel like there is a void in your heart. You begin to search. You begin to search. And then this search never ends. You search things. It never ends. These guys were, that I talked about in John chapter 21, they went back fishing. They were looking for some kind of fulfillment, some kind of thing that would give them an adrenaline rush, like a, some kind of feeling that they have caught something, that they've caught fish, and the whole night they caught nothing, you know. Maybe you're in the same pursuit. You're trying to pursue career. You're trying to pursue uh, uh, recognition. You're trying to pursue fame. You're trying to pursue, you know, and uh, you're not getting it. You're trying to look for money, but you're not getting it. You know, the Bible says money has wings. It flies away like the other owner of hotels that the economy is just going sweet. You know, money just flies away like that. And you can't catch it, you know. But... And this is an important part. When you have tried hard and caught nothing, Jesus comes by at the shore. He comes by at the shore. And he's coming at the shore in your life. You read the whole of John chapter 21, that he came to the shore. And when they saw him, it is John who first showed. John looked at him and says, it is the Lord. As soon as John said, it is the Lord, Peter jumped into the water and swam. And John followed him and the others. And uh, Jesus asked them, did you catch anything, friends? He said, we caught nothing. And then he said, here, this is some breakfast. Gave them some breakfast. He first told them to, to put their nets on the right side. And then they caught 153 fish when he came. Okay. You know, child of God. That pursuit, that kind of running away from God, that kind of trying to search things here and there, search for fulfillment here and there, that fulfillment cannot be got in a job, that fulfillment cannot be got in a fourth degree or in a fifth degree, that fulfillment cannot be got from a second wife and a third wife, that fulfillment can only be got in Jesus. He is at the shore. His being at the shore could be this sermon that you're listening to right now. His being at the shore could be the message that your friend sent you telling you to go to church. His being at the shore could be so many things that have been working together, calling you back to your place in God. He's calling you today. Will you accept the offer? He's giving you an invitation. Let me give you an opportunity. If you want to give your life to Jesus, if you want to come back home, I want to give you an opportunity. Repeat this prayer. Say, Dear Jesus, I'm coming back home. I'm coming back to the place of loving you. I confess that you are Lord. I believe that you died and you rose again. I give you my heart. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. I am born again. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations. You are now born again. You are a child of God. I want to hear from you. Send us a message on one of those numbers that is on the screen. If you are in Barara, you can visit us at the Upper Room Church in Barara in Kamukuzi, just behind Beacon Petrol Station. It used to be called Mogas. It's now Beacon Petrol Station. If you are in Kampala, you can join us at the Upper Room Church Kampala. If you are in Entebbe, in the Garuga area, you can join us at the Upper Room Church Entebbe. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward to helping you grow in your relationship with God. God bless you. I see you again next Sunday.